Hi, my name is Andrew Evans, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the 1960 paper by Thomas Saz called The Myth of Mental Illness. Now, this paper um, is pretty famous. It's by this psychiatrist named Thomas Saz, who um, you know, famously claims that mental illness is a myth. Um, I should note that Saz himself um, was a psychiatrist and that he um, continued to be a psychiatrist and to practice psychiatry after writing this paper. He followed this up with a book in the 1970s, also called The Myth of Mental Illness. Um, and Saz has been associated with um, a movement called the anti-psychiatry movement. Now, he himself rejected that term, which makes sense because he was a psychiatrist and continued to practice psychiatry. But what that movement had in common, and it's related to people like uh, Foucault, is that they were critical of establishment psychiatry of that time and probably would still be critical of psychiatry and the mental health professions today. Right. So says, um, I'm not sure when he passed away, but it wasn't too, too long ago. Later in his life, he continued to critique psychiatry and mental health care for the way it was operating. He continued to agree with his claim, right, that mental illness is, in fact, a myth. But I think he thought it was possible to continue to practice as a psychiatrist despite this. Right. Well, one thing I want us to keep in mind as well is that this paper is from the nineteen is from nineteen sixty, and some of the ideas are about out, outdated scientifically. So, Saz seems to be skeptical that a lot of mental health conditions could be linked to brain processes, but neuroscience, of course, has come a long way since nineteen sixty. Um, so, we should keep that in mind that some of those things didn't really hold up. Also, some of the language that Saz uses is a bit outdated and politically incorrect. Um, he uses some um, somewhat offensive ways of referring to certain groups of people, certain races, things like that. So I just want to note that here at the outset that there is some language that's not um, ideal in this paper. Okay, so Saz quotes... Uh, or this quote is from Saz. He says, my aim in this essay is to raise the question, is there such a thing as mental illness? And to argue that there is not. So this is a really bold claim, right? Um, there's no such thing as mental illness. What could Saz mean by that claim? So to understand what he means, we have to look at his discussion of norms and how they relate to illness. Now, I've talked about norms in other uh, videos, um, especially relating to Derek Bolton's book, What is Mental Disorder? And we've noted in those videos how norm and normality and normal, like these terms can mean a variety of things. Um, some things we've discussed is it could be a statistical norm. We also talked about how it could mean, you know, not meeting some standard and I think in this case, um, Saz is referring to not meeting some standard, right? And norm in that sense. So um, let's see how he sort of deploys this concept of norms in the, case, in the situation of illness. He says, quote, the concept of illness, whether bodily or mental, implies deviation from some clearly defined norm. In the case of physical illness, the norm is the structural or functional integrity of the human body. What is the norm deviation from which is regarded mental illness? The norm from which deviation is measured whenever one speaks of mental illness is psychosocial and ethical. So what is Saz saying here? It's a bit of a wordy quote, but what he's getting at is that illness itself means deviation from some norm and that physical illness um, when we you know normally speak of illness the norm is relating to the body right it's a norm that is a deviation from the structural or functional integrity of the human body an illness is some sort of biological or bodily dysfunction for him mental illnesses aren't really illnesses because the norm that's deviated from in mental illnesses are psychosocial or ethical in nature, right? They're not bodily norms. So norm, right, um, doesn't have to mean like uh, in the value sense of norm. We don't have to mean it that way. Um, 
you know, the, the heart, right? The heart has a norm of, um, of pumping blood, right? So that is a norm in the sense of the bodily and functional integrity of the human body. So when the heart isn't working, it's, you know, that causes illness um, because it's not meeting some norm. What Saz is getting at here is that mental illnesses aren't like that. Their norms are psychosocial and ethical in nature. All right, so let's dig in a little bit more to what SAS means by norm. So as I mentioned in other videos, we've looked at what norm means, what normal means in the context of mental health, and it can mean a variety of different things, right? Um, statistical abnormality, right, just means uncommon or rare. I think what SAS is getting at here is norm in the sense of a standard, right? So there is some standard, there's some correct way for something to be or to function, and abnormal um, is a failure to meet that standard. So when he says that bodily illnesses, right, are deviations from norms defined by the bodily or structural, or I'm sorry, the bodily illnesses are deviations from the norms defined by structural or functional integrity of the human body, what he's saying is that there is some norm um, way that the body should be. There is some function of the human body and illnesses, bodily illnesses are deviations from that norm. Mental illnesses, the norm is different, right? It's not bodily norms. It's, so, um, it's psychosocial or ethical norms, right? It's norms in terms of how society expects us to be or how we think we should be, right? Um, and that mental illnesses are deviations from those sorts of norms rather than deviations from bodily norms. So when Saz says that mental illness is myth, what he really means is that mental illnesses aren't real illnesses. Real illnesses are deviations from bodily norms. They are bodily dysfunctions, whereas mental illnesses are deviations from social and ethical norms. Rather than illness, rather than illnesses, SAS calls mental distress that psychiatry SAS calls the mental distress that psychiatrists treat, quote, problems in living, right? So he says, you know, there are problems in living. Um, and that's really what we're treating when we say we're treating mental illnesses. We're not really treating illnesses, and that is why he claims that mental illnesses are myths. So we can apply this to a case, right? Suppose that we have this individual here and they are very anxious, right? Um, Saz would say that there's nothing wrong with this person's body, right? There is no um, bodily or biological norm that's being deviated from here. This is a normal problem in living. Sometimes people get fearful or anxious and um you know that can be very distressing and might need um to be intervened upon but it's not the role of medicine to do that right um he's basically saying you know this isn't an illness it's a deviation from some uh, psychosocial norm so what implications does this have for treatment for saz since what we call mental illnesses are really problems in living. He thinks that they do not fall within mental health care's scope. So this is a quote from him. He says, quote, since medical action is designed to correct only medical deviations, it seems logically absurd to expect that it will help solve problems whose very existence has been defined and established on non-medical grounds. So again, what is Saz saying here? He's saying that um, if the problem is a normal problem in living and doesn't come from some sort of biological bodily cause, then it doesn't make sense to treat it medically, right? Um, if it needs to be a sort of bodily illness in order for medicine, um, you know, the, the medical community to be the right part of society to respond to it, right? I think we can challenge this a little bit here. Um, so suppose 
um, there is someone, you know, suppose we're, you know, taking this person as an example, who's really anxious and suppose they're anxious because of something that is happening in their life. Suppose they're going through some sort of natural disaster or, um, they've experienced some horrible event that has happened in the world and they're really anxious. Now this, it seems like they're having a normal reaction to, um, experiencing a traumatic event. Right. It's not that there's some biological dysfunction present here. They're just reacting to what's happening around them. And the reaction is reasonable. Saz would say, well, this isn't a medical problem, so we shouldn't respond to it medically. But if this person's distress is super high and they're really not functioning well because of this response, then maybe it is a medical problem. We might think that um, medication might be appropriate, or we might think that at the very least something like therapy, some sort of mental health intervention might be appropriate. This is where Saz disagrees, and this is why he's a critique, or this is why he's a critic of psychiatry. He's saying that psychiatry is treating normal life problems like medical problems. Um, and we can wonder if that uh, is a problem or not. For Saz, that is a problem. All right, we should be very clear about what Saz isn't saying. Saz is not saying that mental distress and suffering does not exist, right? When he says there's no mental illness, he's not saying that people aren't anxious, people aren't depressed, people aren't, um, you know, uh, um, feeling these, these mentally distressing experiences. He's just saying that we shouldn't refer to these conditions by the name illness right? And we shouldn't treat them as illnesses. So this is a quote from him. He says, quote, while I have argued that mental illnesses do not exist, I obviously did not imply that the social and psychological occurrences to which this label is currently being attached also do not exist. It is the labels we give them that concerns us and having labeled them what we do about them. So of course, mental distress exists for Saz. He's saying that um, we shouldn't be calling it mental illness and we shouldn't be treating it medically. Okay, so I want to end with just a brief writing exercise. So spend some time thinking over these questions and then spend a few minutes writing out some answers. So read over these questions, maybe pause the video and spend a little bit of time um, writing out some answers. So here are the questions. What do you think of the term mental illness? Do you agree with Saz that we should get rid of the term? For Saz, of course, um, it goes further than that, right? He makes a further point. He is also saying that we should not treat problems that are psychosocial in nature as medical. Do you agree? What are some pros and cons to treating psychosocial problems medically? So there's a variety of ways we can think about Saz's argument, and I will address this in different videos. Um, it could be the case that he's just wrong, that these are psychosocial problems. Maybe these are medical problems after all. But even if he's right that you know, mental problems are actually psychosocial and ethical in nature. He's making this further claim that we shouldn't treat them by medical, with medical interventions. So spend a few minutes considering this. Do you think, um, you know, this term mental illness is problematic? And do you think, um, what do you think of this idea that psychosocial problems shouldn't be treated medically? All right, that's how, all I have for this video. Thank you for watching.